and we crushed the Lions, dude. I mean, yeah, they're the Lions, but like they were coming off a hot one win streak, dude. We had to like let him go, man. And like, you know, you're gonna lose games, man. Yeah, we're a little inconsistent on like defensive side of the ball. Can't, you know, stop the run with this shit, but Welcome to the Jungle Bengals fans, I'm Kyle Phelps, and this is Crunch Time! As I've said before, the fact that the Bengals are playing meaningful football in December for the first time since probably 2015, that fact is not lost on me. This season has been the most fun that I've had as a Cincinnati Bengals fan in years, and I think that we, as fans, need to remember that for our own sake for the sake of our you know, mental health as much as anything. Obviously, I think we should demand high standards out of this team, but I also think that it's worth remembering that we're allowed to have fun when the football team is solid, even if they're not you know, dominating the NFL. That said, the anxiety is going to be riding a high every week this December. Pretty much every single game from here on out is going to be crucial to the final playoff picture, considering the Bengals are in a five-way tie right now for the final two wildcard spots, and they're actually only one game behind the AFC North. As bleak and hopeless as people have kind of felt for the last two weeks through this two-game losing skid, the Bengals are still right there in it, and they can go set things right with a win over the Broncos this week. So, obviously, winning this week would go a long way towards separating themselves from the other playoff teams. It helps that you've got the Colts playing the Patriots this week, as well as the Browns playing the Raiders. And then on top of that, you have the Ravens playing the Packers. So, I mean, really, everything is still right in front of them. And it seems like a pretty ideal week for the Bengals to actually get their shit together. If they can, they'll give themselves a massive advantage through the final three weeks of the season. Now, historically, the Bengals don't do so well against the Broncos, right? The Broncos hold a 22-10 lead in games since the two teams met first in 1968. Now, the Bengals actually won that game. Unfortunately, that means the Bengals have won a total of nine times in the 53 years since. A big reason for that is because John Elway used to absolutely own the Bengals. His Broncos were 8-0 against the Bengals all time. Oddly enough, the Bengals actually won their last game before Elway became the starter in Denver. And then they won their first game against them after Elway retired. So it was like, you know, Elway was just the harbinger of bad things for the Bengals. And if you take out those Elway years, it's actually only a 14-10 all-time lead for the Broncos, which is still, they lead the series, and they, you know, they deserve credit for leading the series. I'm just pointing out, it doesn't look quite as bad if you just take out only the John Elway years, in which the Cincinnati Bengals, at least for half of that time, were like an unnaturally, historically bad franchise. The Bengals went through another losing streak against the Broncos when I was a teenager, though, which is, accounts for the rest of that deficit between us and them. They lost four in a row from 2006 to 2012, and that actually includes one of my worst memories of my life as the Bengals fan. And that was Brandon Stokely down the sideline on a tip drill. Leon Hall just has no idea where he is. Uh. Other than that one play, the Broncos couldn't buy a touchdown that whole game. And... To be fair, neither could the Bengals, but they had actually just taken the lead in a game that, like, neither team could get score any points. And then Brandon Stokely does that. I was at that farce of a game. And if you can't tell, it, it made an impression on me. Now, the Bengals, to their credit, actually rebounded later that year and ended up with their second division championship in four years. But... Man, that one hurt. Like, and you gotta think, at the time, I'm thinking my entire life, other than one year, the Bengals have been an awful franchise. They made the playoffs once in 2005, and leading up to that year, it's just like, oh my god, here we go again. And again, they rebounded, 
but I didn't know that at the time. Now, things between the Bengals and Broncos have been a little more even in recent years. They put together arguably one of their greatest wins in franchise history, at least in my lifetime, in 2014 against the Denver Broncos when Drake Patrick sealed the win and the playoffs with a pick six over Peyton Manning in a play that I called in the moment. I remember I was watching that game with my friends, and I leaned over to one of them, and I said, hey, Drake or Patrick, pick six, right here. I'm calling it. And then, boom, Bengals won. Seriously, go ask them. It was one of my favorite moments in my life as a football fan of any kind. But this week, the stakes couldn't be much higher. It essentially feels like a playoff game, because whichever team wins is probably going to be in control of a playoff spot. The Bengals are going to need to get back to their winning form on the road. Although, that shouldn't be too hard because, you know, they're 4-2 and two on the road so far this year. Were it not for a fourth quarter collapse against the Jets and a missed tackle by Trey Hendrickson against Justin Fields, they could easily be 6-0 and right now. Weirdly enough, actually, in Cincinnati is where they've been the most inconsistent this year. And it's not exactly going to be the easiest matchup they've had this year, though. The Broncos' passing defense is one of the best in the NFL, and their offense boasts the fifth highest average time of possession in the NFL with 31-36. The Bengals are going to have to figure out a way to score, and they're really going to need to clean up those turnovers. The Bengals turned the ball over six times, and they've only created three turnovers of their own, and all of those were against the Chargers. If you want a single reason for why they've been struggling, that's it. Without those turnovers, it actually is entirely plausible and actually likely, considering the way they were playing, that they come back and win both of those games. Then, we'd be sitting here at 9-4 and four, feeling virtually unstoppable and most likely at that point making plans for where we're going to go watch the Bengals in the wild card round of the playoffs, if not actually the divisional round of the playoffs, because at 9-4, and four, we'd be tied with the Patriots for the number one seed. Instead, we're staring a must-win game in the face, and we're only still in contention for the AFC North because it's completely fallen apart. That said, if you win this week, those weird losses from the last couple of weeks seem a lot less relevant. Suddenly, you're 8-6, and six, and one of the favorites to make the AFC playoffs. Like I said, though, it could be tough. The Broncos look a lot better heading into this week than they did a month ago. But for more on them, we're going to bring in our brand new Broncos correspondent, his name's Steven. Say what's up, Steven. <laughs> what's up, Bengals fans? Uh, glad to be on the show, Kyle. Thanks for inviting me, man. It's great to have you on for the first time, Steven. So I know there have been some good times and some bad times for the Broncos in the last 30 years or so. Uh, so what was it like for you growing up in Denver and learning to love the Broncos? Well, man... My old man took me to the old Mile High Stadium when I was 14 years old. I couldn't get enough of the Broncos back then. It literally took my breath away because, you know, it's like really high up and stuff. So I like could, couldn't breathe. So like, oh, it was great watching Elway play. Like he showed me film at Elway, instant fan. And then in 2015, man, oh, dude, we, oh, that was so good, man. We won it all, dude. We won the Super Bowl the year we legalized marijuana, like, yeah, and I'd have Reefer on here now, man, but YouTube would demonetize the shit out of you, so, like, I'll stick with, uh, stick with my snacky. <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best, man. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure Colorado legalized marijuana in 2012, right? Broncos won the Super Bowl in 2015. Oh, shit. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, I've been smoking this Reefer since, like, I don't know. Like, my dad was, like... He grew that stuff, but I'm not supposed to, like, say that, but, like, he did, so... I mean, everyone does it, so, like, who cares, man? <laughs> who cares, though? Right, so back to the Broncos, then. They've been having a lot of trouble staying consistent this year, right? After that breakout 3-0 start. It's taken them a pretty impressive bounce back, actually, to even get to 7-6. and six. So, what do you have to say to all the people out there who call them pretenders? Pretenders? Man... We beat the Cowboys, man, and, like, we beat the Chargers. Those are, like, one of our main rivals. And we crushed the Lions, dude. I mean, yeah, they're the Lions, but 
Like they were coming up a hot one win streak, dude. We had to like let him go, man. And like, you know, you're gonna lose games, man. Yeah, we're a little inconsistent on like defensive side of the ball. Can't, you know, stop the run with this shit. But talk about inconsistent. You guys lost to the Jets. You guys lost to the Chargers. So I'm really not scared of you guys. <laughs> really not scared of you guys. Well, maybe you should be because I'm not sure this Broncos offense actually matches up well with the Bengals defense. Bengals defense has been stellar against the run this year, actually currently tied for ninth best in allowed yards per carry with 4.1. But that's what the Broncos do best, right? They run the ball? What do you think is going to take for the Broncos to come away with a win this week? Well, we're going to have to run the ball, man, because like Teddy Bridgewater just shows up like he's just looking for his paycheck. So we're not going to win a Super Bowl with that guy, man. I mean, running game stellar. I mean, we got... Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. Glad we picked up that guy from the charge, butch. So they're not running all over us again, man. Feel, <clears throat> feel like, <coughs> be like, holy shit. Spicy as fuck, dude. Dude, yeah. Yeah, Melvin Gordon's gonna, like, really tear it up, man. Offensive line's playing well. I, I really have faith we're actually gonna, you know, not have to rely on Bridgewater to throw any picks. Because he will throw picks if we let him. <laughs> and you guys will intercept the ball, even though Jesse Bates isn't playing as well as he has been. So, yeah, man. No, he hasn't lately. Uh, but I do think a major key in this game could be which offense manages to crack the opposing defense. Because these defenses are, you know, kind of on and off so good this season. A big part of the Broncos' defense has been that secondary aided by the addition of Patrick Sertan II with the ninth overall pick. I know a lot of Broncos fans were divided by that pick when it came in. A lot of Broncos fans were hoping for Justin Fields to be the pick, whom a lot of people didn't expect to be still available at number 9. Are you satisfied with the way that's played out so far, getting Patrick Sertan over Justin Fields? Yeah, I think so, man. Like, Patrick Sertan, he's fucking lighting it up, dude. He's one of the best corners think we've ever drafted and like yeah honestly like our run game is just so bad that like we need to just like rush three and like drop eight or something like that just get coverage sacks all day long baby like i start broncos on my fantasy uh like the defense on my fantasy and like i'm usually not disappointed like sometimes i am like this ain't no 2015 defense but like man Really glad we picked up Sertan instead of Justin Fields, dude. <laughs> Justin Fields. <laughs> He's eating the field, dude. Like, I'm smashing his fucking granola bar, dude. <laughs> yeah, he really has been. Seems like the Broncos made the right choice to me at this point. So, would you agree, then, that, you know, I think this game really could come down to who has the better defensive game plan? Well, Kyle, you gotta prepare for a defensive slugfest, man. I mean, like, dude... I don't know, man. Teddy Bridgewater doesn't really like to throw the ball down the field. So your safeties aren't going to have anything to do. It's going to be a game that's all, like, up front, man. And, like, oh, I'm fucking it up. So we're going to run the ball. And you got to stop the run. That's basically what it's going to be. you got to force Teddy Bridgewater to, like, throw the ball, which he does not do. And he's not going to do. And, uh, yeah, I think we'll come away with the win because you're not going to be able to stop the run. You know they make cracker Oreos? <laughs> like with like cheese? Oh my fucking god. Yeah, alright, we'll see about that, man. But honestly, I think the Bengals should be able to do a pretty good job of stopping I the. I smoked that whole thing. Uh, you, you alright? I don't have any left, bro. It's like the weekend. I'm off. I don't have any weed. <laughs> alright. I mean, not weed. YouTube. <laughs> right, <censor>. right, exactly. <laughs> so. If, if we go ahead and get back on track, I want to go ahead and give the predictions for this game between you. Did you hear the cops? Cops. Oh, fuck. What? Are you no, alright? I don't think that was the cops, man. It's not, not the cop. Okay. Alright, so it, could we go ahead and get back on track here? I want to get your prediction for yeah, this game. I don't game. think that was the cops. Alright. Alright, whatever. Could you go ahead and give me your prediction for this game? Well, Kyle, I mean, probably going to be a defensive slugfest, man. Broncos got a great defense. Bengals got a great defense. And then, who knows, man? <laughs> Probably going to be like 17, 14 or something, 17, 13. I doubt you guys will find the end zone more than twice. But, I mean, I don't know. Well, <clears throat> Bengals could uh, get Brandon Stokely again, <laughs> like in that one game, you remember, man? You like, yeah, uh, 
threw a touchdown pass to Brandon Stokely like last five seconds, dude, and then we like won against you guys. That was that was that was cool as shit, man. That was like that was cool, man. But yeah, I don't know. I think you guys will, you know, probably lose. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> no hate though. I mean, I really like you guys, but I don't really like you guys. Yeah, I wouldn't really expect you to when we play each other this week. But either way, man, I really appreciate having you on this week. Hopefully it won't be another four years before we hear from you. But, you know, considering this will be like the eighth time that we've played each other in the last decade, I have a feeling it won't be. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate you having me on, man. I hope we kick your asses on Sunday, even though, yeah, yeah, we probably will because you guys suck. <laughs> Thanks, see you Bengals fans. Mm. Mm. Uh, Peach is here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching today. You can always find more of what I do at KylePhelps92 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash the Phelps, my Bengals coverage at ATBnetwork.com slash Cincinnati Bengals. The Battle of Ohio podcast, which is available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And right here, if you subscribe. Also, don't forget, I'll be live streaming the Bengals Broncos game on Sunday. I'll be doing live commentary and reactions to that. So until then, I'll leave y'all, as always, with a hootie!